Well, Mac, Matt Wilkinson is a, has a deep desire to see youth workers and parents successfully engage the next generation and inspire youth toward a solid journey of faith. It's a huge challenge, and Matt is taking steps to help meet it. And one of the ways is through this resource that he's written, Youth Ministry <clears throat> Now and Not Yet. Matt, welcome. <laughs> Great to have you with us. Now, uh, you serve as Director of Youth Ministries for the Canadian Baptists of Ontario and Quebec, as well as, uh, as holding a number of other posts related to youth work on both the national and, and local levels. What motivates you to have such a focus on youth? Well, <clears throat> really, through my own uh, youth years, um, people, key people poured into me, mm -hmm. uh, believed in me, walked with me through highs and lows. And one of the things that I found is that value of investing into that generation, into youth. Uh, there is so much potential. Uh, they are uh, uh, they're experiencing life in so many different avenues, so many things coming at them. Uh, they need people that believe in them. And uh, uh, amidst what the world often says about youth, uh, you can often write them off, uh, say they're too far gone. Uh, I believe in youth. I believe in their potential. I believe in who they are. I believe in their, who they are right now, as well as who they're becoming. And to be able to champion for them, walk with them, uh, encourage them is the reason I've chosen to give my life to investing into youth. Well, just talking with you, Matt, you know, before AIR as well, I could just tell that, that there's a passion there that you, you really uh, believe in what you're doing because you, you know the difference it makes in, in young lives. Now, the, the title of your book, Youth Ministry Now and Not Yet, uh, I'm just wondering what you mean by that title. Yeah, well, with the idea that, I mean, really the, the whole book came out of a survey for me just trying to really understand where our own churches were at, and then it really went from beyond that. But one of the things that's so important is to understand that where things are happening right now in the church, uh, uh, what's happening now in terms of how we minister and reach uh, youth, the now, there is a lot of good. We also know that there's a lot uh, where we're, we're missing the mark. Uh, we know that uh, young adults and youth are leaving the church en masse, and there's a challenge, and we can be grieved by that. Uh, so we need to acknowledge the now. Uh, but one of the things that I look at, when I look at the local church, when I look at the lives of young people, when I look at uh, this generation that is, is uh, one of the ones I look at with, with most hope, uh, that there is a way of stepping into the not yet, which is some of the shifts that we as church, as youth workers, as parents, as grandparents, uh, as church leaders, uh, working together to say, we can step into a new reality that will continue to engage youth, uh, young adults, uh, as they move closer to Jesus, and that there is hope. Uh, it's kind of the kingdom motif. Uh, we're living in the now, and yet there's still more to come the same way as we invest into youth. Now, you, you use a, an analogy because you're a Leafs fan, Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, that a lot of people just kind of uh, look at the past, yeah, well, the glory days of the Maple Leafs and so on, and they kind of, uh, some give up hope for the future. But wait, what did you really mean by that analogy? Yeah, well, the Maple Leafs, I, I am a huge Leafs fan. Um, and I have been over my lifetime. And people may call me crazy for that. Us Leafs fans, we're kind of diehards and we look kind of dumb. Uh, we do a, a lot of, we've been cheering and cheering a team and we keep being told that we're going to be different. And finally it looks as though we're going to make the playoffs. But following the Leafs has been a lot like the church where we often look back at the glory days. We look back and we always talk about when we, cut a, when we won the cup. We look back at those days. Similar to the church, we look back to saying, why can't we be like that? How do we get to be like that? Let's go back to those days. Uh, and then we live in the now where we say we want to change. But for years, it seems as though the Leafs never did change. We kept getting the same outcome, never making the playoffs. And the same way with the church. We say we want to engage this next generation. But we often say it's, well, it's great in theory. But are we willing to make those little shifts that could make all the difference? Well, the Leafs began to make a little bit of those shifts. And we're hitting the playoffs. And that's also what I look at the church and say, we can make a couple of little shifts that could be all the difference of engaging this next generation. I like that. Yes, Leafs are in the playoffs. There is hope for the future and for youth ministry as well. And your book, that's what I appreciate so much, is it's hopeful. It's not just saying all the bad things that are wrong about what's happening now, but, but there's that spark of hope for the future. What, what are some of the, the key areas where, where you see uh, that we could focus on that will help to bring that into reality? Yeah, well, you know, it really can be unpacked in, in, in a three short phrases. Uh, Youth-led, family-empowered, adult mentored. And really, as, as we unpack in this book, they did that a healthy youth ministry. Uh, it used to be that if we just got a good youth worker, if we could just get someone that likes teenagers, 
then we put them, they get their own kind of room, they get their own kind of space, uh, and everything's going to work out okay. We drop them off when they're uh, 10, 11, 12, and we hope that they turn out well at 18. And, and things are changing. Uh, the landscape has changed. And there's some health to what it will look like to say, youth need to have a voice. We need to empower them. We need to give them a space where they matter, where they can shape what's happening in the church and that we'll walk with them. It's not just attracting them to us, but empowering them and that we are um, missionally really saying, hey, you have a chance to invest into the lives of your friends, your peers. Uh, we want to equip you to go out. The family empowered the idea that the family needs to play a key role. How do we come alongside as church leaders, as youth workers, as other members of the church to support the families as they invest into their own kids, which is so critical. And finally, adult mentored. There is not a more significant way and a more significant shift that if we could see every adult that's in the church choosing to walk with Jesus saying, I'm just going to invest into one young person, the difference that that would make. So youth led, family empowered, empowered and adult mentored. Adult mentored. Now, mentoring uh, was important in your life, wasn't it? G yeah. Give us a little bit of your journey through youth. <laughs> I was th 13 years old, uh, junior high, and w on a retreat, I was able to connect with one of the youth leaders, a guy named Andrew. And we just had a chance to chat. I was struggling, just, I just was struggling with, with friendships. I didn't feel like I had a lot of friends, and he took a chance just to hang out with me. Well, this turned into us going out to Tim Hortons together. Uh, I would have a, a peach juice and a vanilla dip. It was a staple when we would go out. He would come to my hockey games. We began to just kind of chat about life and hang out uh, in everyday kind of stuff. Uh, you know, he would, he would teach me how to, to drive standard. He says, Matt, you're going to become an awesome standard driver. And we would spend these kind of unique times hanging out together. Well, over the years, that moved from just hanging out into I now saw a guy who by trade was a lawyer. But by, to me, he was a person that I could look to. When I was trying to really wrestle in my teenage years of doubts around faith, uh, doubts around kind of who am I and trying to figure out this world, here was someone that I could open up to and be able to share stuff with who, who wasn't out to judge me, wasn't out to tear me down, but says, I'm committed to you for the long haul. And he had walked with me. He was a place that I could talk to. And I would say that he was one of the most significant reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing now. Uh, when I look at uh, the life that I'm able to live and pointing people to Jesus because he took time to say in his everyday life, he would connect with me. And it was just that one person is taking that time, that mentoring of investing to, uh, your life into another life that has wow. made a huge difference. So important. I, I, I keep hearing that kind of a theme with the different ones when we have people share their personal stories mm -hmm. on 100 Huntley Street. So, so much of it is someone came alongside me uh, as a youth and help to shape who I am today and pour into me and love. And so, um, so people watching right now, they might be saying, well, may maybe I can <clears throat> be that for someone else. Yeah. And, uh, and there are opportunities if we all you know, look around us. Yeah. Uh, but let me just ask you a quick question. Um, you, you had mentioned earlier that the world has changed a lot you know, from what it used to be. We, we look at social media, you know, mm -hmm. the Facebook and YouTube, Twitter and all these, these things. How has that uh, changed the face of even youth ministry? Yeah. Well, I'd say in terms of relating with youth and connecting with youth, obviously the world has changed a lot. Uh, young people are redefining what it means to be relational. We want to have relational ministries. Uh, that's a key component. Uh, youth are looking to be in relationship. They want people to walk with them in their world. They also, uh, their world to them is not one that's here's a virtual world and here's uh, the real world. Uh, to them, there is a digital world and there is a physical world, but both are real worlds. Uh, that is their world and they're present in it. To you and I, we may look at social media as a means of communication, their communication tool. What we're finding for young people is that it's not a communication tool, but it is a way of life. Um, I gotta tell you, social media, it's not good, it's not bad. It's not right, it's not wrong. It just is. It's present. And so what does it mean for us to have a presence there? If students are going to be living out life there, they're updating their statuses, they're, they're sharing and they're putting themselves out there. Uh, they're trying to navigate that world and figure it out. We don't know all the full uh, ramifications of what this is going to look like. This is still such a new phenomenon. Um, but if we run away from this key place of communicating in their world, where they're putting themselves out there, where they are defining their identity through this, um, then they don't have the support of us walking with them in that world as we start to dis discover 
what is this going to mean and how does this relate? But what we do know is that this is one of the key means by which they're relating with each other. Connectedness is a huge value yep. for them. And this is one of our ways that we can be partnering right. with them. Can be a tool. Yeah. Now, speaking of tools, this is a great resource for you. And not just if you're a youth worker yourself or a pastor, if you're a parent, if you're someone that maybe could come alongside someone else, like a, a mentor, uh, get a, a copy of this. It's on our e-store. You can uh, give us a call uh, or you can go online, crossroads.ca, and click on the e-store and uh, get a copy of Youth Ministry Now and Not Yet. Matt, God bless you and your ongoing ministry to youth. I love the passion. I love the hope that you spread. There is hope. God bless. Thanks so much. Okay.